Alrighty, welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft. I have joined the league, and I've opened a Mox. Ooh, there's also a Mana Crypt. It's a good pack, it's a good pack. I am going to take Mox Jet, though. I, I honestly don't think it's, like, crazy to take Mana Crypt over Mox Jet. They're both very good. Th the damage does matter. Like, it matters a, a pretty good amount. And also, if you end up being in black, Mox, the Mox, the on-color Mox, is going to be quite a bit better, so... I think you'd have to have a pretty specific deck already and like open this in pack two to make that decision. So I'm just gonna take the Mox here. Oh man, asking me to choose between Brain Freeze and Fast Bond? That's pretty tough. I haven't drafted the lands in a while. I really do like Fast Bond. Yeah, maybe I'll just go with Fast Bond for this time. Been been doing a lot of brain freezing lately. And uh, there's also a fetch land and a chariot, but happy enough with Fast Bond. Oh, then we definitely have to take a fetch land. When you have fast bond, fetch lands become really valuable because they make it so Crucible or Ramanop or whatever just uh, completely pops off. So sorry, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Jace is also kind of fallen in most people's estimation, my own included, just because the, the format's faster now. A four mana spell just has to do more than what Jace does. Like compare Jace to Minsk and Boo or Lelia or Oka, like it just interacts kind of poorly against all those. Probably going to Sensei's top here. It's really good with fetches. It can be good with things like Mystic Forge. And I think Sakura Tribe Elder is fairly replaceable. Top is another card which I've gone a, pretty, a lot higher on. Oh, now there's a Breeding Pool. I really do like Breeding Pool. It's one of, one of the best combos of Windswept Teeth. It turns this into a blue-green land, which is where you end up a lot when you first pick Fast Bond, or I guess second pick it. Passing up on Talisman and not a whole lot else. So this pack has Tamiyo which has some applications, but you know, I haven't ultimately been super impressed with Tamiyo. That said, am I taking third path Iconoclast, Oliphant? I guess I have a blue, two blue-green lands and a fast bond. I guess Tamiyo is probably still the better pick given the circumstances, but we'll see how this ends up. We've got a good start. I mean, we did pass Brain Freeze for fast bond, but this looks like a pretty good fast bond deck. Had I taken Brain Freeze, I think I would have leaned Jace over Fetch. But I don't I don't think it's actually close with Fast Bond. A green fetch when you have Fast Bond in your deck is, is very, very good. Next up, we're looking for Crucible or Ramanop would be very high picks right now. Red and six is okay. The fact that it adds another color and then also it doesn't actually pop off with Fast Bond, it's just fine with it. Okay, makes it a little less exciting. I don't really want Delighted Halfling. I don't really want Mana Dorks that much when I when I have Fast Bond. I am interested in Woodfall Primus in case I pick up Flash. So I think I'll just spec on that. I don't mind. I don't mind a good speculation here. And Woodfall Primus. Not really playable outside of Flash or Natural Order. I guess you can reanimate it too and, and breach it and sneak it. Well, not really playable if you're intending to cast it, I guess is a better way of putting it. It does have a lot of combos with it. I think the most open-ended of the creatures has to be Atroxa, because she works with literally everything. Flash, Natural Order, Sneak, Breach, Reanimate, and uh, Green Sun Zenith. Also is more castable even than Woodfall Primus. Oh, there's a World Spine Worm. Also Venser and Raugrin Trium, but I'm going to take World Spine Worm. Let's just be the, the Flash deck if we get it. Also, by taking both of these, anyone who opens Flash is less inclined to take it, especially since World Spine Worm was pick eight. Every person at the table saw World Spine Worm. Nobody took it, so nobody has Flash yet. Because if you had Flash already, you would have taken World Spine Worm, I guess. You could have seen World Spine Worm and then gotten past Flash. That is true. Ooh, there's a Ramen Up. Oh, I, I didn't even remember I opened Ramen Up my open pack, but I guess I did. All right, here we go. Now we just need Zern Orb and we have an infinite life combo going. Looking pretty good. I do like how this is how this is going. So, yeah, the fact that both of the two best flash targets are gone should matter. All right, I'll take Chariot now. I like Chariot well enough. I don't really like Sundering Titan that much. Chariot is a fine card to cast on the fair. Makes, you know, two two twos and plus puts the Chariot itself as a pretty big threat. And then, obviously, you can can do stuff with like Displacer Kitten, Counts for Academy or Cradle, both. Ooh, Spar's Headquarters, a nice little pickup with my Windswept Teeth. And once again, not taking Arbor Elf there because I would rather have a mana base of like Fast Bond and Artifacts as opposed to Mana Dorks. 
Um, I mean, I'm still going to... At this point, I would still put Birds of Paradise or Noble Hierarch in my deck if I were past them. But I still... I would rather take Spara's Headquarters and get another blue green land plus a really easy white splash if I want it now. Then Arbor Elf. Eh, there's, there's the white splash, I think. Leyline Binding, when I have three colors pretty easily already, and then wouldn't be surprised if I hit four or five, especially with a fetch land. I like Leyline Binding. I've actually kind of come around on the card. Well, I don't know about come around. I never thought it was bad. I just, ever since it's got added, I've kind of liked it. You can't play it in every deck, clearly, but in the decks that in the decks that can get all five colors or at least four of them out fairly easily, it's a pretty effective card. All right, Ulamog, put that in the sideboard. Finale, I'll put that in the sideboard. Those are both Thrun. I don't know why this is in the cube. Um, these are both like channel sort of cards that you know if we get a channel we could play. What do we got here? Well, there's Breach. Didn't take the Brain Freeze though, so not this time. Oracle Moldiah, Thoughtseize, Teferi. Frantic Search. I guess I'm just taking Oracle here. Oracle Fast Bond is great. I have a Mox to accelerate it out. Works with the land strategy. And then I don't really mind passing up on Frantic Search or Fast Bond. Teferi's nice, but a little hard to cast. So, oh, there's Channel. All right, well, I did pick up that Ulamog. And I did pick up that Finale. So I'm in for Channel here. Over Corsair, Bobble, Mystic. I mean, Mystic Forge is nice, but it probably wheels. I'm the only. I'm the one who has top. I don't. I mean, maybe an all artifact deck could take it, but I'm. I'm happy to take Channel here. Okay. I mean, we're also like nearly mono green, so even though we have good fixing, like we don't even have that many cards that care about that, which is kind of cool. It's going to be hard to get out of here without playing some some blue cards, of course. Ooh, so th there is Utopia Sprawl, but I think I'm going to take Pest Infestation. This card is busted. I don't always get to take it. It's also even fine with Channel. Channel, Pest Infestation, make like 10 one ones or whatever. Okay. Yeah, I'll take that. It's kind of almost like a creature here. Passing Memory Jar, which I wouldn't mind. Pentad Prism, which I doubt doubt's going to come back. Utopia Sprawl, which could come back. Arbor Elf with like four cards in the pack does imply that Utopia Sprawl has a pretty good chance of coming back. The World Spine and the Woodfall Primus are not that good here. But if I get Flash, of course, they become a lot better. And Finale doesn't really need either of these to be good. Though it is kind of nice to have a Trampler in your deck. Because when you Finale with uh, X equals 10, you know, thanks to Channel most likely, your creatures all get plus 10, plus 10 in haste, but no Trample. Okay, hey, there's a Titania here, and I'm already on the lookout for Zern Orb, and I already have a lot of the cards that would make other people want to take it, which is nice. I have Flash and Zern Orb as just busted cards for my deck that I don't think fit in anyone else's, and I don't mind not taking Tree Speaker or uh, Overgrown Tomb here. Yeah, Titania is a good pickup. Um, there's also an Entomb, I guess. I don't have black fixing yet. Overgrown Tomb would make all these black, but I don't really need it. Oh, you Upheaval? Upheaval Fast Bond's really good. And I don't care about Hallowed Fountain, so... Or Life from Alone. Life from Alone will come back anyway. I'm feeling pretty good about my Upheaval combos, though. Leyline Binding Upheaval is definitely not a combo, so I do kind of have to watch out for that. Um, yeah, these don't... Things are not currently on the menu. So now there's Eternal Witness. Now I probably will take the Ignoble. Just because at this point I don't think Eternal Witness is that good for me. And I like this more than like Animate Dead or Razor Verge Thicket. Get an extra extra piece of acceleration up. Uh, I don't really want to channel out Triplicate Titan. I don't think I've seen Thespian stage, but I admit I wasn't paying super close attention. There's also Horizon Canopy and Endurance. Kind of like Endurance. Endurance is like not the most exciting card, but it's good against aggro and it can be good against reanimator and combo. So I think having endurance, access to Endurance is pretty nice. Oh, I will take a draw seven. That's nice. One of the cool things about Sail into the West is you get it pretty late because it's like a weirdo card that's blue and green. It's a draw seven. I don't know, it's got a lot of strange text on it. I feel like that makes it go even a little later than it would otherwise. And 
I like how it looks here. Tamiyo, not really looking to make it. Leyline Binding, I guess, could make it, but currently I don't like it because it's an anti-combo with upheaval and I don't have... I only When you only have three colors, that makes Leyline Binding cost three. I, I need the card to cost one or two to feel like I'm getting a good deal. All right, well, I'm going to put Woodfall Primus and Worlds Find Warm Way. Look, if I pick up Channel, or not Channel, Flash, you know, they'll, they'll come back in. I'm trying to take Flash. I just want to get a good sense of what I have now. Which is still pretty good. Oh, Frantic Search Wield. Wild. There's also Trinket Mage. Trinket Mage can get Mox or Top, which is nice. Frantic Search is generally just a good card. It also works kind of nicely with uh, Ramanop or Oracle. But maybe I just take Poseju. Poseju is basically like a free disenchant. It just costs you nothing to put in your deck. I think that's kind of nice. Uh, would I factor fiction? Channel Shark Typhoon? <laughs> Probably not doing that. Not really an Agatha's Soul Cauldron deck. I don't know what is an Agatha's Soul Cauldron deck, but I do want to draft it at some point. I guess I'll take Foff, though. Not super optimistic about it. I uh, guess I'm a little more likely to want Burst Lighting or that than Burst Lighting. Uh, I'll take a Savai Triumph just because might as well. I knew Loam would wheel. Sure, I'll take a Razor Verge that I'm still not really intending on playing in a Mishra's Factory. All right. Pack three, what are we looking for? Strip Mine, Zurin Orb. I would take Crucible as a backup, Ramen Up. Obviously, like any Time Walk Ancestral Recall sort of things. Um, you know, any Fast Mana, that sort of thing. Draw Sevens would be good. Flash would be a very high pick. See, I don't want to open Flash though. I want to get like a six pick Flash. I want to get a first pick quality card six pick because no one else can use it, so it's a zero in all their decks. Uh, not actually the time for Academy, sadly. The Mystic Forge didn't wheel, by the way. Uh, not exciting. There's a Tropical Island, which is fine. I should probably just take Green Suns. Green Suns channels a pretty easy count combo, just triple green, and this deck's looking like it's got a good amount of green. And I can get out a Titania or an Oracle. Well, I guess if I have Green Suns channel, I might put Woodfall Primus back in. Alternately, I could just take a third blue Greenland because I have Breeding Pool and Spars Headquarters. And I guess once I peek to get them, so it'd be like a fourth. Yeah, no, green, green Suns is better than that. And I can also Green Suns for Mana Dorks. Mana Leak is great. Not really into balance in this style of deck that much. Don't care about Deep Root Wayfinder. Kinan, yeah, all right, we'll take Mana Leak. And Fractured Identity. Yeah, this actually could be a fine Fractured Identity deck. It's just a strong card, and I have a bunch of free white sources. There's also Probe. There's also Taiga, though I don't currently have a reason for Taiga. Probe is nice with uh, Oracle, because if your top card's not a land, you probe, try to find a land, all that. But I think Fracture Identity's pretty good. I don't know. I guess I'll just take it. This is not a pack that has anything for me. I don't really want Armageddon. I guess it's a combo with Roman up. Red-Black Talisman certainly does nothing for me. I guess I'll take Ren and Realmbreaker, and I'm not even, like, that interested in playing it. Oh, there's a Razor Verge Thicket in here. All right, I'll play that to cast my Fractured Identity. And maybe... Hmm, that was fourth pick. What a bad fourth pick. Uh, maybe I put a Woodfall Primus in because of the Green Suns and the Finale. It like, kind of covers my bases on both. I mean, I still have a couple more cards I want to add here. Natural Order or Ulamaga? Oh, it's got to be Natural Order. Like, I already have a pretty good amount of channel targets between Finale, sometimes Upheaval, Green Suns, and then, of course, Ulamog. Natural Order can go get Woodfall Primus or Titania, or maybe I play the World Spine Worm, and I've got Pest Infestation makes green creatures, Ignoble, Endurance. Like, Seekers Chariot makes green creatures. Yeah, I'm in for that. And could use... Oh, and I just picked up an Atroxa to go with my Natural Order. All right, well, now I wish I'd taken that Arbor Elf, but that's fine. Atroxa is also the busted Green Suns target. So this is pick six. We could still get Flash here. I'm just saying. Um, this is a pretty disappointing pack. Maybe I just take another Blue Green Land. I just don't see myself playing Solemn in this deck or Scrapwork Mutt, so let's just take another land, sure. Maybe I get Leyline Binding in now, because that's the fourth color. Hmm. Ooh, I even have a Mox Jet to sometimes cast a Troxa. That's nice. Oh, and an Ignoble Hierarch. Two free black sources. 
I mean, this is now 18 land with Mox Jet, so 19. Oh, this is my last. Dang, so Flash just never got opened, huh? It's unfortunate. Uh, Plateau does nothing for me. I don't really want to play V-Click. I guess I'll take Nyssa. I could also take Talisman, because it, it casts both Atroxa colors, which is kind of nice. Oh, man, I never saw Zern or Byler. That is unfortunate. Maybe Talisman is actually better. I, I have got a lot of high end. Mm, I'll just take Outland Liberator as a sideboard card. I'm not playing Golos in this deck. Ugin is actually a decent channel card. Do I want another one of those? Maybe I just take Deep Root Wayfinder because it's a card I can match order away and it's just a fine two drop. It's not like it's great, but it is playable. And I would like another thing to to natural order away. Oh, Elvish Reclaimer and Elvish Mystic. Yeah, easy Elvish Mystic here. Knight of the Reliquary is actually not terrible, but maybe I maybe if I play Knight, I don't need... Oh, actually, I found a Knight that I like more. All right, play Knight of Autumn. Don't need a Deep Root Wayfinder anymore. Cut the Cogla. I mean, this is 15 land plus a Mox, so... I like Sensei's top with Oracle. I think it's probably worth playing. I could cut Woodfall Primus because I already have Atroxid in Natural Order for... Oh, I could just cut Titania. I didn't get Strip Mine or Zern or Marit. Yeah, this looks good. So now we're at 16 land plus a Mox, which sounds pretty good to me. I'm splashing one white card and I'm playing a couple blue cards. No, two white cards, I guess. All right. This is solid. Do I need a Plains? Um, I guess I probably want a Plains because if my Windswept Teeth can't get an untapped white source, that seems like kind of a liability when I'm trying to cast Fracture Identity or Night of Autumn or potentially Atroxa. So if I play one Plains, yes, uh, and then I can play like three islands and I'll have seven blue sources. Jules, Jules, come on. Look at me like that. Seven blue sources. Maybe, maybe I want four islands and then the rest. So planes and four islands is five. Plus seven is 12. And then I add five forests and I have 11 green. Plus Talisman, not bad. All right, Jules, chill out. Okay. Uh, and don't want Survive Trium. No, I don't want on a random tap land, even if it casts two parts of Atroxa. Okay, add basic lands. Let's go one plains, four islands, five forests. Five, eight, 11. Yeah, that seems like it's pretty good. Maybe I should do one less, one less blue. That's four, five, six, seven, eight blue. Yeah, I actually think I should. I, I have, because I have a couple lines of play that involve triple or quad green for channeling. So I think I'd like to do that. Jules, come here. Come here, Jules. Come here. There we go. Good girl. Oi. Hey. Oh, wait, Jules. What a good girl. What a good girl. Julita. Julita's seen better decks. She's not impressed. Why are you? Hmm. All right. Let's see if we can get an opponent. Maybe we'll impress them. But probably not. Kind of disappointing. I think this deck's solid. Look, this deck has some draws that can definitely win. It would have been nice to, to pick up a couple cards, which I kind of feel were most likely just not opened. Because if I picked up Zernorb or Flash, either of those would make this deck a fair amount better. And uh, especially in the case of Zernorb, I really can't anticipate or imagine why anyone else would take it. So I think that uh, it was just mostly unlucky that Zernorb didn't pop up. Flash... I still think I could have easily gotten an 8th pick flash. It's possible no one else would have taken it. But at least that card I could see being open and taken somewhat early by someone who maybe didn't think about the fact that Worldspine was gone or 
uh, or world would, would fall primus or whatever though i ended up getting a troxa too so i kind of have all the all, all the good flash cards except i guess triplicate titan and Itali are like the two remaining but either way didn't get either of those i think this was pretty good and uh i'm happy enough with where we ended up it's just the potential you know it could have been better this deck could win on turn one it's got a couple pads to that well the opponent could concede on turn one. They mostly involve fast bond. But even then, it's got channel. Decks with channel can just easily win on turn two. And upheaval and draw sevens into fast bond is pretty nice. All right, on the draw here. This hand is not exciting. I'm not going to mulligan this hand. Opponent's mulling. But I guess I go turn one ignoble. Turn two, nothing. Turn three, if I draw land, I can green suns. Or I could just go turn one, ignoble. Turn two, green suns for Llanowar Elf or Elvish Mystic. Put it mold to five. Esper Sentinel. Okay. Well, I guess a blue source is kind of what I'm looking for now. Let's see what they've got. Nothing. Oh. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm just going to go for it. Oh, wow. Very big misplay on their part. They did that before I had the opportunity to pay for Esper Sentinel. I was not going to pay for it. And because they countered my channel, I, I paid for it. So they just didn't draw a card. That's the only thing that happened there. <laughs> Finale, that's funny. Right. Are they gonna Oh they're actually letting me prevent it now. Alright, well let's go green suns for seven here. And see how this works out. I mean if you didn't counter the channel, I'd be surprised if you countered green suns. And we're just gonna get a troxa here. <laughs> I guess I technically could have a troxa into Ulamog. <laughs> Uh, I get land, sorcery, artifact, enchantment. So, uh, sorcery. I guess green suns is better than natural order because I have the big things already. And land, I think I just want island. And I guess artifact, I want chariot. All right. I mean, not the most busted of all, but obviously still totally fine. Hmm. I think I'm discarding Woodfall Primus to hand size. And, I mean, if they can deal with Atroxa, the then maybe, uh, you know, Chariot into Foth is, is going to be pretty good. If they can't deal with Atroxa, the, the game kind of just ends right then. So, or very quickly at the very least. It would have been funny if I hit Ulamog off that. I probably would cast it. I would just Ulamog the Esper Sentinel and... An island or plains or something. Mm, I would probably not even kill the Esper Sentinel. If they found a way to get it through unblockable against Ulamog plus Atroxa, I guess I'd allow that. I would just kill two lands. We had ten cards to look for Ulamog. Unfortunately, we did not hit. Mm, the other thing I could have done, which I don't think would have been right, is not paid the one to Esper Sentinel, not played the plains. And hope to Atroxa into Forest plus, um, I guess, another Green Suns or a Chariot or something. Like, to use Channel a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Point disconnected. Okay. Well, hopefully they return so we can continue this game. <laughs> uh, we'll see about that. All right. Um... Yeah, let's discard Woodfall Primus. I could even get Woodfall Primus back with Finale if I want to. They have no plays. I mean, the way this game becomes close is if they, like, steal or copy Atroxa. Oh, wow, they played Odawara. Hmm. Interesting. They could have bounced Atroxa here. Oh, Romanov is intriguing. Let's send. Mm -hmm. 
oh, why am I playing wrong up in this deck? I just need to take it out. I, I just like didn't think about cutting it. I'm sure plenty of you watching are like, you idiot. Why is wrong up in your deck? I didn't get Trip Miner's Urn Orb, so like I'm playing it for the one fetch land. No, no, no. That thing's, this thing's out. But that being said, it could be decent to this turn or this game if I like foff into something here. Um, I guess I should just pay to prevent it. And then Green Suns. Actually, let's just play Roman up. Maybe I should just play Chariot. I don't know. I kind of had a plan in mind, then I decided I didn't want to give them a card. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll go Fast Bond plus Factor Fiction. But Snapcaster Reprieve, sure. I guess it kind of didn't matter that much. <laughs> Let's see. So they have three cards in hand. They just got to cycle Snap. Oh, that's why. They, had, they wanted to keep Snap Reprieve up, and then now they cryptic the Atroxa. Well, I actually can cast Atroxa very soon here if I want to. Hmm. Let's just go Factor Fiction, pay the one. Kind of just want to hit lands now. Let's see, I have all these spells in hand. Mm -hmm. So what else am I doing this turn? I guess, hmm, if they put both lands in the same pile, I can actually go pretty hard this turn. Let's just take these then. Let's play a land. Let's play a land. And I guess since I already paid the one to S per Sentinel, I guess I might as well just do this and get my elf. Since I got nothing better to do and I would have had to discard otherwise. And then next turn, we'll see what they do, but I might just replay Atroxa to Fairy Plus. Yeah. Mm hmm. Soaring. Yeah, their deck looks pretty good. I mean, they did mold a five this game. That obviously hurts. Let's see. Land. I could play Ramanop at 15. And then pay a few life to get a bunch of lands into play. Oh, are they going to... Are they going to counter me? I guess we'll see. I have a lot of targets here. Forest, forest. So I guess the question is, at what point do I play a Troxa? I guess they're not really even attacking me, so kind of feels like getting all these lands into play is good. Might as well play around Mana Leak, right? Hmm. Troxa here. They're pretty into sending my spells back to my hand. What? X is zero. No, X is one. Oh, I see. I just hadn't finished typing mana. All right. Blow up the soul ring. Unfortunately, can't pay. Pass the turn. I guess I should... No, my Heath was out of actually untapped lands. I don't think I wanted to crack Heath more to get tap lands. Mm, do plus Teferi again. And they're up to a bunch of cards in hand. The one downside to paying a lot of life is that Upheaval Fast Bond is no longer quite as good. Mentor into Gideon. Okay. Though, I might still upheaval this turn, actually. I have so much mana. I have six. Yeah, I have a million mana, even if I play a bunch of lands. It's probably fine. Okay, they get to untap two lands. I'm going to assume they don't have a counter in their hand. And I'm going to attack Teferi with the pest tokens. I just want the pest tokens to die so I can gain a little bit of life. Mm -hmm. 
Be kind of wild. Oh, they just didn't block. Okay. Hmm. Black upheaval. That's it. Wait, when's the match? This was game one, right? They just scooped the match, All right? I guess we take those, sure. We'll head right into round two then. And, uh, Guess my opponent, I upheavaled them so hard, they didn't want to play another game. All right, well, I would like to play first. Keep this hand. Uh, I'm just gonna leave up turn one mana leak. I don't know, people are crazy out there. I don't wanna dark ritual entomb reanimate or something. Let's see what they play on turn one here. Pay the two life and nothing. Okay. Oh. Channel. All right. Let's play this land then because I'm going to want as much green as possible. Silver Library. Oh, actually, let's just let that one resolve. We'll keep the mana leak. I'm just going to blow it up with Pest Infestation. And then I won't have mana leak up for a turn. But I will play fast bond, because why not? Look, I'm giving up channel pest infestation. I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, draw. <laughs> Swamp, huh? Hit for one. Tireless tracker, that I will mana leak. Wait, why do I have a swamp in my deck? I know I have a Troxa, but I don't think I'm I don't think I'm actually supposed to have a swamp. Oh man, I can't I can't channel here, so I'm just gonna cast sail into the west. That's fine. We'll uh we'll just make do with a Fresh set of seven, will they have five cards in their hand? Okay, well, I can't quite natural order, even with a fast bond around. So next turn is when we'll have it set up. I mean, I have a lot more mana than they do. They did discard Renin Roundbreaker, Crop Rotation, Gaia's Cradle. Oh, and Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Okay. And they were also going kind of big. Oh, and I never took the Ramanov out. All right. <laughs> I've got some deck some deck errors to fix. Look, sometimes, you know, you play a little bit loose. It's an experience I've had before. Next turn, I'm going to go... I'm just going to straight up fire off Natural Order. Get me a Troxa. So I am actually somewhat close. I'm three mana short of a lethal finale, like finaleing for 10. It'd be funny if I could manage that. Let's see what they've got going on over here. Mm -hmm. They have four mana, really five, because they haven't played a land yet. They have eight cards in hand, and then they have four colors. So I guess I would hope they could do something decent. Hex Drinker. Well... Really nothing that starts with Hex Drinker is going to be that concerning to me. Arbor Elf, sure. <laughs> they're leveling up Hex Drinker, all right. Oh, and now they're keeping up counter spells. Woodfall Primus wasn't exactly the draw I wanted. That's okay, though. I could stop most counters here. All right, let's get a Troxa. <laughs> sorcery land creature artifact. All right, well, sorcery artifact um, land creature, sure. Land 
Mm, do I care about... Let me crack this. I don't think I care about that hex drinker very much. They can level it up all they want. They did choose to leave two mana up instead of leveling up hex drinker, which could mean a counter spell, which they couldn't have countered um, the natural order very easily. They could have remanded it, which I assume they would have if they had remand. Mana leak wouldn't do anything. Uh, I guess we're about to find out what's happening here. Unexpectedly absent. All right, that's their leaving up. Sure. Do I, I guess I don't really care about that too much. Um. All right. Well, <laughs> Ramen up is kind of comboing off once again, which is funny. I do have to watch out for that hex drinker, I suppose. Trying to drink my milkshake over there. And let's play Sika's Chariot. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to pay four more life. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I don't have enough mana. I was trying to see if I could Woodfall Primus this turn, but I guess I'm actually a, a fetchable short. Well, in that case. I could Fracture Identity the Hex Drinker. Technically, what if they level up Hex Drinker? One, two, three, four, five, six. They spend their whole turn leveling up. I guess I don't care that much. Let's play Heath, get my Forest, and then cast Fact or Fiction. Okay. I just have to make sure not to get uh, down to six life, which I'm not too worried about. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll take the Atroxa pile, I think. I don't really have anything to green suns into. I'm at nine. And let's cast a Sika's Chariot. And pass the turn. I haven't found upheaval yet, but I and I only have eight cards left to find it, or rather, there's only eight cards off my deck, so it's pretty likely I'll find it. Channel, okay. Let's see where this goes. Um, yeah, I mean, I would lose to Emrakul. Ulamog's in the graveyard. If they're if they're channeling to power up Hex Drinker and then play another spell, I feel fairly good about this. Because finale is just lethal next turn. All right, looks like Hex Drinker is going up the ladder. Six, seven. Well, at some point they're going to want to spend mana from their lands, unless they have something else to play. I guess I would lose to Time Walk. No, it doesn't look like that's what's happening, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I mean, I, won't, I can't. I can't block. Horizon canopy. Birds. All right. Yeah. This. This. Do we just win with finale here? Uh, finale. Seven. Eight. And ten. <laughs> Remand would be pretty good. Graveyard or library. Uh, I guess I'm just putting this into play. Gaining four life. And then attacking with everything and they're super dead. Alright, playing against some kind of other four color green deck. Let's get this Roman up out. And get this swamp out like I don't know how that found its way in there. I really did. I know. Well, I know how. It's because I did the add basics lands button. Yeah. Now I think I'll get another island in there. That's fine. Wait. Did it an island in a forest? It did. Okay. The thing's a scourge. Uh, uh, Outland Liberator? No. Knight of Autumn? No. Actually, doesn't even seem that good. They have Sylvan. They do have channel, which is kind of annoying. 
Cogla. I mean, I might want Leyline Binding. I have four colors. It's probably fine. It just it answers some of their big things, which is nice. And then I could just play another land. Maybe I just play another land. I don't think it's even terrible to do that. I have Oracle and Fast Bond in my deck. Having slightly over on land seems totally fine. And I also have uh, Beseju as a potential kind of spell. I do think it's fine to play Knight of Autumn in the main deck because I have Green Sun Zenith and Natural Order and uh, Finale of Devastation. So <laughs> I have a lot of ways to fetch it if I really needed to. Hmm. Feels like I'm just allowed to mulligan this draw. This is a lot better, so let's keep this. Put Woodfall Primus on the bottom. I'd rather have it in the deck anyway. Did are they mulling to five here? I mean, this is just a blue-green control hand. I just go mana leak into pest infestation into factor fiction and kind of go go down that road. Let's see here. So Obviously, Mox Jet would be a great draw. So would Ignoble. Anything that lets me cast Foff on turn three would be would be great. Factor Fiction would actually be awesome. Or Fast Bond would actually be awesome. Fast Bond, I would get to have turn one Mana Leak up, which would be pretty cool. And then fire off uh, turn two Foff. Though I'd have to draw a land at that point. Yeah, opponent did mold to five. Fetch into Arbor Elf. Okay channel that's that's a pretty good draw actually i mean i don't have something to do with it right away hopefully they're not channeling okay this is not channel at least tireless tracker that'd be a good unmulligan but channel means that yeah all right that's pretty good at turn two tracker i'm gonna keep up mana leak and then next turn i'll probably play the ketria triumph Anyways, channel gives me a lot of outs, though that tireless tracker actually is a pretty uh, effective way to combat channel, because if they just start sacking clues and then uh, hitting me with tireless tracker, it would be painful, and my channel equity would go down dramatically. Oh, I do get to mana like this. Okay, I only take three this turn. <laughs> I might... I might pest infestation the the clue here. Yeah, I, I do an untapped land, so let's just do this. Blow that up. That's not like the most impressive play, but I kind of want to keep Tireless Tracker off my back if I want to have a chance to go Foff into channel. Taking two hits from Tireless Tracker is a way to make that pretty ineffective. I also have the play next turn if I want. Channel, then cast Foff, and hope Foff hits Ulamog, Green Sun Zenith. Just those two, honestly. Ren and Realm Breaker. Okay. Um, let's just do some blocks. Hmm. I might want to just I might want to make the channel Foff play because channel's gonna be kind of dead in a second anyway. All right, I'm in. I even get to cycle catch you a trial if I want. Foff. One, two, three. Let's see. Any hey, Ulamogs? Oh, there's a Green Suns. All right. Well, they. I mean, they don't know what's in my hand, but first of all, they can't put Green Suns and Besage together. And really, they should split it Green Suns versus everything else. And I'll be taking the Green Suns. I have a channel going. So, like, any forest makes Green Suns into an Atroxa, at the very least. I mean, they, they don't know what else I even could have. Oh, you're sweetening the pot? Okay. I mean, I, I'll take extra value. Why not? Green Suns for seven. I still think it's better to get a Troxa than Woodfall Primus here. Though, unfortunately, I can no longer Ulamog after this. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, land creature enchantment sorcery artifact. Well, in artifact enchantment creature. Um, land, I guess plains. So I can either take Green Sun Zenith or Upheaval here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one mana short of Ulabog, and that's funny. I think I'd rather have Green Suns. Sure. It's pretty close. I don't know. I'll play the Mox, so I have to discard fewer cards. And pass the turn, I guess. Oh, Dogerto making little dog yelps over there. I like it. She's dreaming. Okay. Crack a clue. End of turn. I mean, they have to find an answer to Atroxa. Or once again, they kind of just lose to that. If they do have an answer to Atroxa next turn, I guess I'm like... Chariot Green Suns for one or something along those lines. Mount it. Kind of doesn't matter because they have access to all colors, so maybe they don't even need to get Mountain. But all right, What I want to see them do is crack a clue to start things out. Good, good, good. That means they don't have a either an answer to Atroxa or just like a better play. I'd rather... The baseline play is them, them clack, cracking clues. Clacking clues. Okay, another clue. Well, not too many answers for Atroxa on two mana. So, feeling pretty good about Atroxa going over and smacking Ren and Realm Breaker. They might want to minus two the Ren just because of that. Oh, they're going to attack with Tireless Tracker. They're offering the trade. No, I'm not interested in the trade. That's a good attack, though. Next turn, I could... Leyline Binding the Tracker if I want to. Or I can just play Chariot and Green Suns and get an Elfin to play. Then I have a lot of blockers. Milled Endurance, Unexpectedly Absent, and Exploration. They can put Exploration or Endurance in hand. Well, they can't cast Endurance to block with. Exploration's kind of neat. If they have a land in hand, they can play a land. Exploration, play another land, get another clue, crack a clue. Yeah, that's what they're going for. Their draw ended up being pretty good for a mold of five. Tireless Tracker on turn two definitely does that. Yeah, lots of clues out there. Into Sylvan Library. All right, draw... Uh, let's kill the Red and Round Breaker here. I feel like I'm going to win the game pretty easily if if I don't, uh, like if Atrox doesn't play for another turn or two. I don't really need to try to kill them that badly. I'll just get, oh. Obviously could have gained an additional life there. But classic, make your uh, attack and then make your decisions and then be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, they have seven mana plus exploration at the start of their turn, Sylvan and a bunch of clues. Like, this game's definitely not over. That being said, next turn, I get to attack with Atroxa and maybe Chariot. I can Leyline Binding the Tireless Tracker on the cheap. I can either play Triumph and do it for two mana or just do it for three mana. I guess it's a good kind of like playing the Triumph untapped for free. <coughs> and then I'm two turns away from casting Ulamog. But I kind of suspect the game won't last that long. Okay, well, they're start, starting to crack Tyler's Tracker clues again. After Sylvaning, if the first thing you're doing is like cracking clues, like that is a tough, tough way to go about it. Okay. 
Pentad Prism in the Hex Drinker. Into Deep Root Wayfinder, we're out of cards. All right. Um, I guess I'm one damage short here. All right. It wouldn't have been lethal this turn because I would have because uh, I attacked Realm Breaker next last turn. So it's not like the extra point last turn mattered from killing them. But now I have seven, eight mana. Let's just play this. Past the turn. Oh, I actually should have ooh, just just cycled to catch your triumph. It didn't really make sense to uh, to do otherwise. Mm -hmm. Like getting a discount on Leyland Mine doesn't matter if I don't have. <laughs> Anything else to, to play? Cradle. All right. I mean, they're getting to see a lot of cards here, but it's not that many things that answer Atroxa, especially since Unexpectedly Absent is gone. I could have Leyline Binding the Tireless Tracker. It didn't really seem like that accomplished anything. Feel the Dead is something. Oh, and they're done. All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. let's edit the deck because the swamp and the ramen up have to go. Put an island in. I was just playing 41 also. All right, look. It's possible some looseness occurred. I'm not going to deny it. But we're 2 0, so scoreboard. And we're going for a trophy here. I feel like we got a pretty good shot. This deck, uh, again, a flash and a Zernorb would have like completed some of the combos, but this Atroxa carries a lot of weight. I mean, Atroxa is just great. And then Fast Bond with a draw seven and an upheaval is also pretty good. So I like that. And I have. It's a good channel deck and a pretty good fast bond deck in a decent natural order deck. And all that together, I think, is, is pretty good. Even if this also could have been a great flash deck and a great Zernorb deck. Yeah, like if I had Zernorb, I would have just get to play both Titania and Ramanop. And then if I had flash, of course, the World Spine Worm would make it in. So certainly a little bit short there. But I like where we're at. Haven't had a chance to really fracture it or go off with Oracle. I've definitely had some good channel wins. I like the channel factor fiction. That, that ended up working out nicely. Well, there's two cards that would really be good there. Plus some other weirder outs like factor fiction and a talisman plus uh, finale actually would do the trick too. All right, on the draw here, around three. Let's see if we can... Get some good fast bond openers. Yeah, I think fast bond is certainly the card I want most in my opening hand of all of them. And let's see what my opponent has got for us here. And who even done a decent job of drawing Mox Jet and having some pretty fast hands there too. So don't mind it at all. Hmm. Well, I'm definitely going to keep this hand. Turn one S percent. <laughs> second opponent, second blue white opponent, do that actually. Um, let's actually go Spar's headquarters first. The reason I'm playing that first is if I go turn one forest elf, turn two, I'm just playing an elf in a tap land. I think it's fine just to play two elves on turn two. I don't know. I wasn't really going to. Turn to uh, channel pest infestation anyway. Okay, let's not play the mocks because of Esper Sentinel here. Mm -hmm. All right, well, 
This looks like a normal white weenie deck, except they also just randomly have a Baleful Strix. <laughs> sure. Okay, let's go. Huh. I could do some some channeling here. What would that look like? Like, if I go channel pest infestation, I could pay a bunch of life. It sounds pretty good. Let's cast Mox Jet. Pay the one. Cast channel. Cast pest infestation, targeting those two. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. X is five, I'll make ten tokens. I guess I'll make Alright. Oh, I guess I should have just tapped those also. Alright. There we go. Twelve tokens. And it got to kill both their like little dorks, because why not? And then next turn I can just send with everything. Um Yeah, I think I like that. Block two and take 10, or block one and take 11. I want to be lethal over two turns, so. And then I go to five, you're at nine. And now I have 11 attackers, really 12 if you count Elvish Mystic, and. <laughs> oh man, you love to see it. Uh, playing against like White Weenie, do I want. Deep Root Wayfinder or something. Maybe I want the Leyline Binding. Knight of Autumn seems fine. Endurance seems fine. All right. Channel Pest Infestation, huh? All right. <laughs> I didn't uh, didn't think that was going to come up too much, but I suppose it coming up once is pretty reasonable. Uh, I'm just going to mulligan this hand. This hand does not really do much here. <laughs> like, I don't know, I'm playing against a white weenie deck. I don't really need to keep a hand that is basically four four drops of Sensei's top and two lands. I can just, I'm just allowed to mulligan. Keep, put back Talisman. Oh baby, this is a turn one Ulamog hand. Can we get there? Turn one. I could turn one Oracle, but let's not do that. Let's just go fast bond. Land. Pass. And then now, if I draw a land, I can just play turn two Oracle. If I draw a channel combo piece, I can do that too. Either one sounds pretty good. Hmm. Land to go. I'm not burning channel to play Oracle Moldia here. It just seems so bad to do that. Oh no. Uh, all right, that's not like that bad. The fast bonds like kind of mostly used its did its thing, which was nothing because <laughs> I didn't draw another land. But I guess if I play Oracle, they might kill fast bond in response. Not sure. All right. I mean, they might also counter the Oracle. We'll we'll just see. It says making this channel get a lot worse though. Mm, that's fine. All right, land here would be quite good, or just an Ulamog. Oh, or that. I accept that, too. Channel for seven. Always Atroxa. Because Atroxa is the best. Atroxa, boom. Unfortunately, still not into Ulamog. Like an instant creature artifact sorcery land. So artifact, definitely Mox Jet. Instant, definitely Factor Fiction. Land. Creature, I think I'd prefer Endurance. No. I'll just take Ignoble. And then now Sorcery. Do I want Green Suns? <laughs> Actually, maybe I don't want Mox Jet. Maybe I want Talisman. And then I could take Pest Infestation. I could take Natural Order. Natural order sounds like it's a little better. All right. 
And the reason I wanted Talisman is because now I can go Talisman and Yeah, we're going to go for the gamble. Oracle. <sighs> Was really hoping to hit a land there. All right, well, that was a shame. We got greedy and punished. <laughs> I mean, I, I could have also fought there, but I didn't seem like it was good. I mean, before casting the Oracle. Or just played Ignoble Herrick. It felt like this was a better gamble, though. I mean, if they don't answer for Atroxa, the game is about just about as over as it would be otherwise. But... Well, we do channel the basically last possible turn where it could really do good things. Or not do channel, do the card to go with channel, of course. This upheaval is probably not doing much this game now that fast bond is gone forever and channel's gone. And I'm not enough life anyway to do either. <laughs> wow. Nothing? Ulamog, huh? Uh, let's just attack with Troxa here first. Um, let's go Sensei's top, spin top. I guess I did attack without playing my exalted thing again. <laughs> look at all these, look at all these giant idiots. All right, crack this. Just get a forest. Play another forest. Nice. And then I think I just play the the hierarch and then pass. I'll just keep up Mana Leak and Factor Fiction. There's really no reason to fire off a natural order. So they didn't play a land or a spell. They had no play on their turn. I really can't imagine what they have that could possibly make them win the game. Nothing is the answer. All right, well, that deck wasn't that good, and we built it in a wild way, but it had channel, and channel really can steal games. Plus, Atroxa is so good. There's a reason I am always behind taking Atroxa early, and... Uh, in this case, late. I had all the cards that went with it. I had Natural Order and Green Suns. Well, not all the cards, because the, the list of cards that goes with Atroxa is like this long. But I had two of the really good combos with it, and I channeled out an Atroxa thanks to Green Suns like three times. So that is what it took to trophy. As always, thanks for hanging out. We drafted, made a few errors in deck building, didn't get punished. In fact, got rewarded. The Ramanop did some things. And then we got to finish a lot of games with the Troxa. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. Maybe more Troxas. Maybe not. You'll have to tune in to find out. <laughs> I'll see you then. <laughs>